Well, then I'll just switch it out for motor oil. Okay, I know, I know, the title is a bit dramatic, but I promise I'll back it up. The question is, what if something in your blood was harming your arteries? Well, that seems to be the case for many, but not all people. And no, it's not the typical high cholesterol or inflammation or anything along those lines. I'm talking about your own red blood cells, the very same that are transporting oxygen throughout your body and keeping you alive. Check this image out. The arrows are pointing to little packages released by your red blood cells. These packages are called extracellular vesicles. And these packages, these uh, vesicles, contain something that is harming your arteries. But again, only when unhealthy. We'll get into what that means. First, what exactly happens to your artery when healthy vesicles versus unhealthy derived vesicles are exposed to your arteries? Well, here we're looking at measures of artery ability to relax. So your arteries open and constrict as needed to maintain blood pressure. And the more dynamic and able to relax, the better their health typically assumed. Here, the lower the lines go, the better, the more artery relaxation. The blue condition is the artery exposed to healthy derived vesicles, and the red line is the unhealthy derived vesicles. Clearly, the unhealthy condition experiences less relaxation. So something is going on here. Well, that goes back to what I teased earlier. Something inside the vesicles is causing major problems for artery lining cells called endothelial cells. That something is an enzyme called arginase. Okay, now I'm going to get a bit technical, but I'm going to summarize the main point cleanly right after, so bear with me. For your endothelial cells, which line your arteries to relax the artery like we just saw, they release relaxing molecules. One of these molecules is called nitric oxide and it's potent. Generally, the better your nitric oxide status, the better your arterial health and flexibility. Nitric oxide gets produced by different enzyme inside your endothelial cells called nitric oxide synthase. So the more nitric oxide synthase activity, the more nitric oxide, and the better your artery health, generally speaking. With me so far? <laughs> if someone shakes their head, absolutely no. Okay, I'll summarize in a bit, hold on. Now, what does nitric oxide synthase have to do with the bad enzyme, arginase, in this scenario? Well, the more arginase there is, the more competition there is for the substrates, the building blocks for nitric oxide. Arginase and nitric oxide synthase compete for the same substrate, so the precursor molecules, but arginase does not produce nitric oxide. So, naturally, if you have two kids fighting over the same toy, the good kids, nitric oxide synthase, won't win every time unless he's John Cena or something along, <laughs> along those lines. But your nitric oxide is not John Cena, I promise you. In effect, there's a reduction in nitric oxide. The main point here is that we want nitric oxide around our arteries for them to function well. And the vesicles being taken up by the endothelial cells contain arginase, which reduces nitric oxide in our arteries, thereby stiffening them, a bad thing. Now, what I just told you is true, but what if I told you that the amount of arginase found in the unhealthy derived vesicles was the same as the amount found in the healthy ones? Would that throw you for a loop? Well, that's because it doesn't make much sense, but there is an explanation. We'll get to that, but there's also another fascinating and slightly more complex mechanism by which arginase impacts our endothelial cells called ENOS uncoupling. And your endothelial cells may begin acting strangely too. That plus some specific molecules you can focus on that stop this whole process and more is discussed in the extended version of this video that you're watching. It's part of the Physionic Insiders Research Program. Plus you get an accompanying article with all the details, not to mention a backlog of categorized other exclusive videos and articles, and even all these perks right here. If you're interested, use the link below and join the insiders. So yes, it turns out that there's no difference in the amount of arginase in the vesicles, but this is something that you learn in a molecular biology program. The protein quantity in, is one factor, another factor is the protein activity. So is arginase just lackadaisical and sitting on the porch, waving to the neighbors, sipping some sweet tea, or is it zooming around the yard, mowing the lawn, trimming the hedges, cleaning the gutters frantically? Well, it turns out that arginase activity is a major factor. Okay, so what do we take away from all this? Well, 
We know that unhealthy red blood cells release unhealthy extracellular vesicles containing arginase, an enzyme that competes with the healthy enzyme ENOS, ultimately leading to poor artery health and stiffening of our arteries. However, what makes these red blood cells unhealthy? These results come from insulin-resistant individuals, people dealing with type 2 diabetes. So, if you're not insulin-resistant, then I wouldn't worry about this. Your red blood cells, at least by these measures, are treating your arteries well. However, if you are insulin resistant or diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, then addressing that through nutrition, exercise, and the like is going to potentially revert your red blood cells back to being less damaging to your arteries. In fact, if you're so inclined, there are ways of improving that all as detailed right here. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. See ya.